You probably heard about the recent school bus tragedy in Iowa. On the way to school, a rural western Iowa school bus caught on fire and claimed the lives of the school bus driver and a 16-year-old student. Now, the National Transportation Safety Board's preliminary report on that December fatal fire shows that it started in the engine. Investigators, however, are still trying to determine whether the bus should have had its electrical system overhauled earlier because of an earlier recall. KWWL's Elizabeth Lamanier is digging deeper tonight, asking how safe is your child's school bus? In inspections six days before the fire show the bus had two mechanical failures, one involving a malfunctioning outside warning light and an exit lock signal you couldn't hear. The bus was pulled from the fleet but put back on the road shortly after. Buses are given a daily once-over, which leaves us asking what steps are schools taking to ensure the safety of your child? This is the Nindor family as their five kids get ready to take the school bus to Waverly Shell Rock. So the bus comes right to our front door. Um, they hop on, they get to school safely, and we get to work on time. Moms have this worry, right? But to kill that mom worry, I just sort of remind myself that I've put my faith into our school district and our bus drivers and trust that they're in good hands. Every time a bus goes out, there's a, there's a pre-trip inspection that takes place. The driver goes through and checks multiple things. We've got an extensive list that they go through to make sure that uh, you know, the lights are working, the flashers are working, the stop arm is working. During last year's spring inspection, 18 of Waverly's 32 buses passed inspection, just over half. Superintendent Ed Clampus says only 27 buses are driven regularly. The rest are spares. If they are checking before the trip goes out, and it might be, you know, soon that they've got to hit the road. If that left turn signal isn't working, they're not taking that bus. A records request shows that Waverly Shell Rock had to repair a bus with a missing floor screw and another whose exit sign was out. A bus that failed inspection had an emergency exit that wouldn't open. All these safety checks are designed to catch problems before students ever climb aboard. All the way open so that they come open and, then, and the alarms go off so that somebody knows that there is going open. Inside the Western Dubuque District Garage, Transportation Supervisor Ernie Bullabau walks us through one of their typical safety checks. Western Dubuque is the largest in the state geographically. That's why maintaining their fleet of 97 buses is crucial to the safety of their students. Before the routes, they, they go around, make sure all the, the window hatches open, the roof hatches open, the back door opens you know, freely and that they're not sticking or anything like that. During the second check of last school year, 46 of the 71 buses Western Dubuque uses daily passed inspection. They had to replace one of four taillight bulbs and fix an exit warning sign that wasn't working. Of the seven that failed inspection, one had a stuck emergency exit, another had a problem with its brakes. Unlike most districts, Western Dubuque has a train service crew. Here we've got four guys that take care of all of our buses. They all bring the buses in every 2,500 miles, the oil changes, filter changes, and all that too. And um, you know, so we feel real confident in, in uh, the work that those guys do. The National Highway Safety Administration reports that fatal school bus accidents are actually pretty rare. On average, about 131 people die in school bus-related crashes every year. Of those, only 9% are riding the bus. The majority of those killed were in another vehicle. The rest were pedestrians or bicyclists. Most of the time when kids are, are injured or killed, it's when they're crossing the street, getting onto or getting off of the bus. Only a handful, including California and Texas, have some type of seatbelt law. In Iowa, there is none, but school districts like Des Moines are trying out lap and shoulder belts. But the Iowa DOT argues studies show seatbelts on a bus can actually increase the chance of head and neck injury. That in order to be effective, the belts would have to be adjusted for each and every student. On a federal level, the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration recommends belts on buses. Bolabau says there are some factors to consider. Because belts do bring up some other problems that, you know, if they're in an accident, would it be longer to get people unbuckled and off the bus? We're very confident in the safety of our buses. Uh, we'd rather them ride the bus than ride home, ride to school with their parents or ride, drive themselves home. For Western Dubuque, a new bus typically costs $85,000, but a bus with seatbelts would cost an extra $10,000.
$5,000. Elizabeth Mani at News 7 KWL. All right, Elizabeth, thank you. Now, currently there is no discussion this legislative session on seatbelts being required on buses here in Iowa. Yeah, that seatbelt discussion obviously is a critical one that's going to be debated at some point in the legislature. We'll be coming right back.